It's time again for the Craig Reed Show, the world's most famous roadie, Craig Reed. And if uh, you people are having trouble finding Craig on the internet, uh, on YouTube, go to Craig Reed, the world's most famous roadie, and you should be able to find him on YouTube pretty easy. And uh, today we're going we're gonna to take some more questions. Craig's going to talk a little bit more about Leonard Skinner history. But to start off with, we see uh, Craig has quite the outfit on, the uh, racing outfit. And I think it Monday is uh, racing night over at the uh, Reed household, isn't it? Yes, it is. I always have friends over here on Monday night. And because my buddy Jeff, he goes up to that. There's the auction, the car auction is on Tuesday, so he goes up on Monday nights and kind of looks at the inventory and sees if there's anything up there. And he comes back on down on Mondays and we race. And my buddy Sammy comes over and and we race. So I'm going to try to knock this out so we can get to some racing. You know, that's what men do. You know, that's what men are supposed to do anyways. I don't know what the high heel boys with the high heels do but anyways we won't get into that but hey you know what um like alan used to say hey looky here you know <laughs> i think i shared that with you last week you know uh w our first podcast i kind of was told you all that i was kind of concerned about doing an introduction and stuff and letting you know all about who i am and everything but you know, we never did. I, I kept telling Griff, man, I said, man, damn, you're a rocket scientist, Griff. I mean, dang, and you don't want to talk about it, you know. So I, so I finally got him to write a little a little summary down on the description of what he did and everything, you know. But the other day we were talking about being retired, you know. And, 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 and I, I, you know, I would say, man, I can't even imagine going back to work. And he's going... God, you know, they want me to come back to work at, at NASA, you know, and, and um, I don't know. And I said, well, what are you going to do? He goes, I don't have time to go back to work. I'm too busy re being retired. He's got to have it on. Yeah, there. backwards. And, uh, I just don't, ha I don't know where I could fit in going to work in my day, you know. And I'm like, you know, you know, this podcast, you know, I... You know, I, I told you before, the guy from the radio station wanted me to do a, a podcast, and he told me about this Zoom stuff, and I got pretty interested in it. So I told him, yeah, I'll go get the equipment. And, you know, he said, do a half-hour thing, and we'll cut the best parts out of it and and do about a 10-minute one. And I said, man, well, you know, I think I can do that, I think. You know, I said, I, I know. I know I'm I, I'm a little slow these days. I'm 71 and I don't remember all I used to. But if we can do that and cut them out, I think I can splice one together and do them pretty good, you know. But uh, then that fell through and I got all this equipment and I'm going, there I go again, spending a bunch of money on something I really don't need, you know. So people are going, why don't you do it yourself? And I'm going, well... That would be kind of difficult. I, you know, just talk about the things I want to talk about, you know, blah, 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 and I ended up talking about myself all the time, and that's not what I really want to do. Not that I mind talking about myself, you know, but, but you know, it's kind of my favorite thing to do. But anyways, but um, uh, today we had an interesting thing happen and on on Facebook, and I won't get into the whole situation, but. Uh, you know, I, I lost, I, I got, when I was 65 years old, I found myself fat, uh, couldn't run, uh, real hap unhappy with myself. And a friend of mine said, man, I'll bet you a hundred dollars you get to 250 before I do. And I looked at him and I went, if I look anywhere near what you do, I'm on a diet right now. And I lost, I lost, it took me about, I don't know, I, I, I was helping another friend of mine out lose weight, but he, 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 he was 450 pounds and he finally died from having bed sores because he couldn't get out of bed. And that was kind of a motivation for me too. But, 
you know, I decided I was going to get healthy, man. And I was, I was, I, I said, I quit drinking. I quit drinking. Yeah. I quit drinking about 500 times, you know, quitting is easy. Sticking with it's a little rough, you know, finally I got past that, you know, and I never was addicted to cigarettes. So they were, they were easy. I quit them back in the band when the band, when the band wanted me to quit drinking, I quit smoking. And I said, they'd accuse me of being drunk. And I'd say, you know, if I was drinking, I'd be smoking, you know. So well, since I wasn't smoking, I didn't think they knew I wasn't drinking, but they knew, you know. I mean, it, uh, you're stupid to think you can drink and nobody knows that you act like a totally different person. But, you know, I started eating healthier and I, I lost 80 pounds, you know. So I get on fake book, you know, and I, I brag about <laughs> losing weight because everybody on there i see in the pictures everybody on there is fat you know i mean uh, 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 obesity is the number one it, it's an epidemic you know but nobody talks about it you know it's like it's like hate speech you know you're, oh god yeah so i get on fake book you know and i try to get people healthy i got the stone roadie soup you know i'm the stone roadie you know and I, and I, you know, I, I try to get people healthy and people accuse me of fat shaming <laughs> for putting on shit that's healthy. You know, I oh, mean, uh, you know, I mean, yeah, they, fat, they is don't beautiful. Do that. <laughs> fat is beautiful. Yeah. Every day of the week. We all know that, don't we, you know, but anyways, enough of that. But, um, because of that, I have people on fake book belittling me for being stupid and trying to do a podcast with my mental condition, you know? <laughs> I mean, get a grip, buddy. You know, I was on a plane crash, you know? Doctor told me, you're going to have memory issues, you know? Plus, I was an alcoholic for 40 years. I was a drug addict for 40 years. And I was on a plane crash. Being on a plane crash, I got brain damage. Yeah, okay, belittle me, make fun of me. And then you make get mad at me for mentioning that you're fat, you know, and, and cut me down. I can't help but that I got brain damage. I was on a plane crash. You can help it that you're fat. You know, you just don't yeah. eat so damn much. You're addicted to food. Get a grip. Anyways, enough of that as well, okay? I'm doing the best I can at this with my limited capacity, okay? I'm 71 years old. I got brain damage. All right, can we get past that? I'm doing the best I can. This is our seventh one. You're supposed to do 12 before you even get a grip on what's happening, okay? We're half, we're up at the top here. This is our, blah, 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 blah. what are we going to do? Are we going to get better? Are we going to get worse? You know what? It did, at this point, it don't matter. I'm doing this for myself, you know? I'm, I, I got this equipment that just makes me mad that I'm not able to do this, especially with you people out there calling me stupid, you know, whatever, you know? But I, I'm not going to be the best. But like I said before, it's better to be unique than be the best. You know, you can be in unique, you're being the best, you're number one. Being unique, you're the only one, you know. And there's something about a reputation. I'd like to talk about a little bit about, about a reputation. People wonder how I got the reputation of the stoned roadie. Uh, no, no, not the stoned roadie. <laughs> I mean, it's obvious how I got that reputation, the stoned roadie. But, you know, the, the most famous roadie in the world, you know. All right, let's talk about that one now. So I'm on fake book, you know, and and when I first got on there, I tried to tell all these Skinner sites that everybody on there knows everything about everything. They're experts. So I got on there and they would throw me off the damn site because I would tell them what the real truth was. They would not let me on there. So I said, you know, I could care less. You know, you go, you guys go on with your bad self and believe whatever you want. You know, I'll just go on with my bad self and just, you know, make fun of you because you're fat. You know, so, but um, so, well, where was I? Boy, I you're you're gonna you're thing. talking <laughs> about why you became the world's most famous. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So, anyways, so they they say, man. 
you know, you ought to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I said, man, that's for that's for rock stars. I'm a roadie. Well, you're 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 like part of the band. I goes, yeah, I'm the most famous road roadie in the whole wide world. Well, you are, you know. So then. Uh, it just, you know, kind of exploded from there. And I was going to the Rock Hall of Fame. And, and I know the lady, um, Brenda, from Roadie Magazine. And, and she messaged me. She goes, so you're the end for the uh, Roadie, most famous Roadie. She said, I've been trying to push that up there at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And, you know, but they don't want nothing to do with it. Because <laughs> I've just been having fun with that thing, you know. But I'll go up there and I'll pitch them the idea and see what they say. They didn't want no part of it. I told a couple of the guys, I said, I said, I am the most famous roadie in the world, you know. So they just kind of, ha <laughs> yeah, right. So anyway, so I just decided, you know, Ronnie Van Zant. Now, now we're going to get into a little bit of Ronnie Van Zant here. That's what y'all want to hear, you know. So um, one time me and Ronnie's talking about reputations. Well, we talk about that a lot, really. He, he, he was... You know, I think that's a lot why he did a lot of what he did. You know, like I said, he tried to throw Joe Barnes out the plane. And, you know, he knew people. Were while it was that. flying. Yeah, yeah, while they were flying, yeah. And Ronnie did some crazy things. And I think he he was just knew people would talk about it. And he would get around, like Jesse James. He always talked about Jesse James, you know. And I think it was Ronnie, I'm pretty sure, one time said, you know how the fastest gun in the West got the title of fastest gun in the West? He said he went down to the, he, he just put it, went down to the newspaper and every town he went to and he put it in there, this guy was the fastest gun in the West. And then he went to all the telegraph offices, you know, and pretty soon it was all across the country that this guy was fastest gun in the West and he started the rumor himself, you know. But um, I don't know if that's true or what happened to him or whatever, but Ronnie said, you know, he finally got killed, you know, but nobody knew the guy's name that killed him, but they remembered that guy because he was the original fastest gun in the West, you know. So I put this out there, you know, and I figured I'd get challenged by someone who said, no, I, this guy's the most famous runner. Oh, this guy, you know. Every, but it's funny, even the people that say I'm stupid, don't say anything about I'm not the most famous roadie in the whole world, you know. So I must some, have some kind of uh, criteria to me, uh, evidence to meet that criteria. I had, I guess, I had that backwards, you know. <laughs> but I got brain damage. You have to excuse me, you know. But you know, nobody's mentioned that, and that kind of surprises me. That, but if anybody wants this title. Step forward. That's why I did it. You know, I don't care about holding it forever, but I just wanted to be the first, you know, but you know, I'm not going to be hard to beat. I got a pretty good list of stuff. I think I got 18 things on there. And, uh, you know, I thought I, one of them, I, it was kind of a mistake cause I put on there. I was the, on the most famous airplane crash there ever was in history and i i had heard that so i assumed that it was true like a lot of things that you all hear that th aren't true i i assumed it was true since i heard it but i heard it was amelia Earhart, no leonard skinner and amelia Earhart, the big bopper uh i don't know ricky now uh, well whatever they were so I, 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 I said I was going to get on here and I was going to, I thought it, maybe I'd talk about that sometime. So yesterday I got on the internet and I found out that the most famous ones in the world are those Pan Am flights and blah, blah, blah. And, and then I said, well, look at the most famous in music history. It's the big bopper. Ronnie Van Zant, uh, male vocals. Ronnie Van Zant's not even mentioned. You know, there's other ones in it. That surprised me, you know. So. You know, uh, it turns out I'm, I wasn't in the most famous airplane crash in history, but I think that's debatable. I mean, who remembers the Pan Am flight? Everybody remembers the Leonard Skinner. Do you remember the Pan Am flight? I don't. So, you know, who's making these these lists up? You know, I don't know. But um, gosh darn, um, you know, I think I'm just about run out there. How long we've been here? Oh, about uh, 12 minutes. So we're... We got about another, we're halfway through this and we're going to try to make us about 20, 25 minutes, you know, because, you know, I know, I know 
I know after today on 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 Facebook, I know that I got a lot of listeners out there because they're going, "Wow, he was really telling them what he thought about that incident today." I I got to tune in and see what the heck he's gonna say, you know. So, you know, I I kind of just do that because I know what y'all gonna do because. You know, it's just like when I post stuff about fat people and they complain about it. You know what they do? They can't wait for me to post something else so they can see <laughs> what I said so they can bitch about it, you know? So y'all can just say whatever the hell you want to say about me. It don't bother me at all. You know, it's like, you know, I was in the music business for a long time. They don't look at reviews. Nobody does. They play in the city. They don't look at the reviews because, it, you know, you know, you don't know what you hear and it'll depress you, you know, and everything, but I, I love them. I, I just love it when you all just put me down, you know, because you know why? I don't give a shit, you know? You all don't pay my goddamn salary, so I could care less what you think. I learned that back in the days when I was a roadie, when I'd go on a little favor off a groupie, I'd just come out and just say it right out. And they, she either said, yes, no, or you're disgusting. And it didn't matter to me what she said. I just moved to the next one. And it didn't take too, too many times. And you know what? I didn't care. I would never see her again in another 44 years. So I, what do I care if I, what she thinks about me? She's not paying my salary and neither are you. So let's take the first question. <laughs> okay. Well, let's go back to the last podcast when somebody asked the question about how many cars got wrecked in the Mercedes. Yeah, that's the one I wanted to get yeah, back to. I want to talk about when I was at Alan's house and I don't remember what I was doing. He was on the phone all of a sudden he come flying by me barefooted and just you know uh, and i and he went out and ran in the car and jumped in the driver's he didn't have a driver's license so I said, what are you doing al i went over and jumped in the den it was a mercedes 450 mercedes sel what are you doing he says I'm, I'm, I'm going, you, I don't think you want to ride with me. And I just put, buckled my seatbelt and I said, I'm, I'm going with you. <laughs> so we took off. Oh my God. And, uh, we made it about a mile and, uh, we went, uh, left the center and we, he did, he did manage to miss a car head on, but to do that, he had to go off the road. We're doing a hundred. I don't know how fast we were going, but I had a seatbelt on. All I know is we, we left the road. We hit somewhere where there was a pipe going across the road. We hit that and it launched us in the air and we flew and we landed and went over and a couple of times and I landed up as I, I was sideways laying like this and alan alan uh, all i could I, my hair is caught in the window and i couldn't really move and i can see alan's foot like this he was in the back seat <laughs> and we were sideways and so and i finally uh, got loose you know and, and he got out and somebody opened brought up on the top of the car and opened the door and he got out and they pulled me out of the passenger seat so I was in the cop car and, and they said, I, I said, I was driving, you know, cause I didn't want Alan to get in trouble. We were going on a tour, you know? So, um, I witnessed that. Hey, I pulled that guy out of the passenger seat. That long haired hippie guy with no shoes on was driving. <laughs> so they, they took Alan to jail for driving without a license drunk. And they took me to jail for lying at the scene of an accident, you know? So we went to jail together and <coughs> that one for one, that was one of the times we went to jail together. But, uh, yeah, that's about the, uh, that's how about long, the, how long were you in jail? Oh, it was, uh, we, he had a really good lawyer <laughs> down there. We, we were in there long. Yeah. Yeah. So he was able to make the tour then. That, that was, that, 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 that was before I started, uh, needing a lawyer down there. <laughs> and by the time I got, uh, got up to where I, you know, was in that category he said man i'm about wore out for favors you know 
um, uh, Alan with Alan and Billy and Gary, you know, I've about pulled all the strings I can pull. As a matter of fact, that lawyer was lawyers, uh, law, Alan's lawyer. And when he finally got involved and killed that girl, it, his record came out in court and, uh, those, the judge and that lawyer got, got some trouble because it, Alan paid him a lot of money. I paid him a lot of money too. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. I hey, uh, Craig, that. I, I got actually have a story that I heard from Gene Odom and I think I might've told you this, you know, Gene Odom does these, uh, West side tours where he takes people around where Leonard Skinner grew up, where they went to school, the old hell house place. And, uh, and he was taking people over there to the, uh, tree that Gary Rossington hit, you know, in the song Oak tree, you're in my way. Right. And so Joe Crimp, uh, said, Hey, you know, I was in the car with, uh, Gary when, when we hit that tree and I, I don't think Gene, might be taking them to the right tree. And, and I told that to Gene, right? And Gene goes, I don't give a damn what, what Joe Crimp said. Gary Rossington hit every oak tree in Jacksonville. So it don't matter which tree I take him to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, that's hilarious because that connects with something that, that what happened today, you know, because I sold some stuff on eBay and people say, damn, that. Leonard Skinner stuff. Oh yeah, we can tell this that we can finish up with it. That Leonard Skinner stuff sells for a lot of money, you know. And uh, you know, there's it, it, it's funny that I I I sold that Leonard Skinner stuff on there. I I was with Foreigner. I was with Journey. Marshall Tucker stuff sells pretty good, but Foreigner and Journey stuff you can't give that stuff away. I swear to God, I put on a sticker on there from Australia, 1978 world tour, Australia, just put it up for 99 cents and it didn't even get a bid. And that's another thing I'd like to mention. Everything I ever sold on eBay, I started at 99 cents. I never set a price of what I wanted. And I've, 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 I sold stuff on there for a lot of money. I started at 99 cents. You guys are the ones who decided to pay a bunch of money for it, not me. You know, and, I, and it's stuff that nobody wanted that came. Yeah, out. yeah, yeah, yeah. We won't get into that, you know, warehouse thing. And I got there and all that. It'll be, take way too dang long. But, but, anyways, I, I, another thing I was wanted to get into with that, you know, Leonard Skinner, how famous they are. I mean. Look at the people that have Leonard Skinner tattoos on them, permanent tattoos, Simple Man, Freebird, Ronnie's Picture. I mean, just that tells the, uh, the whatever you, whatever you want to call it, their, their popularity is, is humongous. I mean, it's been almost 50 years, and there's still kids or, or, uh, uh, imitating Alan, uh, man, Alan would just be yeah. gloating so much if he could see these kids that look like him and play like him. And he would be going, looky here, looky here. Here's how you do that. <laughs> yeah. And Ronnie too. I mean, you know, uh, uh, it's just, you know, that's the biggest compliment you can give somebody to Im imitate him. Look at the people that 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 imitate ronnie wearing that hat a lot of people don't look good wearing that hat ronnie looks good wearing that hat donnie looks good wearing that hat johnny wouldn't look good wearing that hat a lot of people don't look good wearing that hat but they wear that hat <laughs> and there you wasn't know? that many of those hats either a lot of People don't no. realize and that. that's what somebody t was, was saying today about that hat that pawn stars have. I called that. I'm the one that did the endorsement for those hats with Charlie one horse and, um, uh, Texas hatters and I, I, Ronnie's name was never in one of those hats. 
the the hat that Ronnie Van Zant somebody took acetone or whatever and got one of them hats that said in memory of Ronnie Van Zant and wiped that out of there. I know that's how they did it because I had one of those hats and I gave it to somebody and he did that, you know, but it wasn't that hat. He just did it to see if they could do it and it worked. So, but, um, yeah, that's not Ronnie's hat. I called him up and I said, Hey man, told him the story, told him who I was. And the guy said, man, his little brother, Johnny said that was his hat and I'm going to believe him over you. Johnny was 15 years old and in Jacksonville, knew nothing about Ronnie's hat. So you believe who you want to. Yeah. So that, uh, that, I think. That's uh, the end of that story. You know? that, yeah, I think. You that believe who you want to. Not you know? enough I was there and did the, did the endorsement. Johnny was home in Jacksonville going to junior high school, you know. So you believe who you want to believe, you know. A lot of them kids, a lot of the kids and, and Leonard Skinner don't even remember their dad. I mean, little Lily does. I don't think Melanie remembers too much of Ronnie. I don't think Karina might know remembers too much about uh, Steve. You know, that's 50 years ago. My God, I mean, all these people. Do, oh, I was a big, I was Ronnie's baby, baby. I was Gary. I was Alan. That guy on that dang Skinner site that one time I got on there, the guy that turned out to be a child molester running that site that was running the, running the, the damn memorial site and all that, you know, he started running his mouth to me and, and look what ended up to him. He ain't seen him for a while. <laughs> hey, Craig. So anyways, I see, I see up. the light. I see the light. No more darkness. No more night. Now I'm so happy. No troubles in sight. Praise the Lord. I see the light. <laughs> well, it's time for you to go back to racing and, and let's hope you don't crash like yeah <laughs> i'm gonna crash so and, uh, gonna are we ready for up. the clicker yeah we're ready i'm gonna go racing uh so here we go and we'll see you next that's time that's number seven and we'll call that one a wrap cut <laughs>